Hello there. This Ford Mondeo has been condemned by a professional mechanic. He says there's a problem with the engine, that he can't figure out what, but that it's definitely serious. Oh dear. Welcome to Cast By TV. Right, I bought this car with the full knowledge of what the mechanic said, so before we start the engine for the first time, let's do some basic checks, such as whether it's got any oil. Look at the dirt. So let's see if the engine has any oil. If not, we'll have to top it up before we try and start it. And I don't think I have any in stock for this car, so that would mean a trip to the shops. And going to the shops is something I try and avoid at all costs. Right. Fingers crossed. Yes, we do have some oil. It's a little low, but that is definitely enough for now. While we're here, we may as well test the battery to see if it needs to be charged or replaced. Now, I've already grabbed a spanner and loosened this bracket, the support bracket, so we can now read the writing here that says the battery is supposed to be a 60 amp hour 600 EN. So we can now enter that information into the battery analyzer and then we'll know where we are. Right, let's have a look. 12.17 volts, not the best start. That is definitely a bit low, but nonetheless, we'll run the battery test. Da -da -da. Now we need to increase that to 600. There we go, run the test. And we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, We've lost the spatter. <laughs> I've dropped it down there into some inaccessible crevice that's too small for my hands. So luckily we have this thing here, which has a magnet on each end and a torch on this end. So hopefully we can fish it out. Otherwise I'll be buying a new 10 millimeter spanner. Now in more positive news, I have also checked the other fluid levels, coolant, brake fluid, and so on. And they are good enough for now. Come on, Spanner. Oh, it's like fishing, isn't it? Come on. Oh dear. Come on. Okay, we've hooked it. Mustn't drop it again now. Otherwise, we're right back to square one. Come on, come on, come on. Gotcha. As for the battery test, the results are not particularly encouraging. Oh, let's have a look. So it says down there on the analyzer, replace battery. It says the voltage is 12.18. It should really be 12 and a half. It's measuring 288 EN, but ideally it should be 600 or thereabouts. Bouts. Nonetheless, we may be able to improve things somewhat by giving the battery a charge. I'm certainly not going to rush out immediately and buy a new one. I'm not made of money. Now, if I put the camera there, can you see what's going on? Not really? Okay, hang on. How's that? Are we good? Okay, basic engine checks complete. Let's now see if it starts. The previous owner tells me it generally does, albeit reluctantly, so let's see. Into neutral. I tell you what, we'll open the window so we can hear the engine better. Ready? Okay, well, it has started. Doesn't sound too good, does it? Well, we have a check engine light there, which is no surprise.
Not a lot of response from the throttle down there. Yeah. Let's try and start again and see what happens. Well, that sounds good. Got some exhaust rattle down there or something. Oh, it's not happy, is it? Okay, well, let's see if we can get any useful information via that check engine light. Now, this machine, as I'm sure you know, is an OBD2 scanner, and we can plug it into the car, and hopefully it will retrieve some code that suggests why the check engine light is on. We've just got to figure out where to plug it in, and that is most likely going to be down here somewhere. Where is that OBD2 port? Ah, oh, yes, there it is. Okay. There we go, all plugged in. Now we need to turn the ignition to accessories, which means popping it into neutral. We're generally leaving this car in gear because, well, as I mentioned in the last video, the handbrake isn't working properly. So, on to accessories. And now we can look at the magic scanner and press whatever buttons are required to make it work. This one here, by the look of it. Yes, that's doing its thing. So we'll give that a moment and come back to it. In other news, if we momentarily turn our attention to the 100 pound Nissan Micra, we can see a strange visitor there on the windscreen. There he is. A little green fella wandering around on the windscreen, having the time of his life. Wait, where are you going? I hope you subscribe to the channel, mate. OK, the scanner has given us some useful information, which ties up with what the garage told the previous owner. I'll show you. So if we look in the top right hand corner of the scanner, we can see we have three error codes, starting with P0300, which is a random slash multiple cylinder misfire detected. All right. And now if we move to the next code, P3, no, P0, <laughs> P0301, that's a misfire on cylinder one. And if we move to the third error code, P0304, a misfire on cylinder four. And what's quite good about this particular scanner, hang on, let me release the camera from its mount so we can move it around. There we go. Oh, you come back into focus camera. There we are. If we now press the help button there, it gives us a load of information about what the code means and the possible causes. Focus. There we go. A double misfire does explain why the engine sounds like a bag of spanners. I've also found something interesting among the paperwork, which is down there. This is an invoice from the garage that couldn't fix the car. So we can see that seven months ago, they supplied and fitted a new coil pack for the grand total of 120 pounds. And that does make sense. If we look in the engine, because you may remember that we noted that the coil pack does look newer and cleaner than the rest of the engine bay. And also, if we go back in here, we can look at the invoice one further back than the coil pack when the car had a full service, a coil spring and an MOT for the grand total of £471, and this invoice was about 10 months ago. 
What an interesting day. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And now, though, we've got to stop fiddling with the Mondeo and have a look at this remote control. It's not mine. It's not for this car. But I promised someone I'd fix it if possible. And I suspect I know what's wrong. I suspect... Yes, the batteries have leaked everywhere. Yeah. See what I mean? All this nasty stuff here and around there. And the battery also feels like it's caved in slightly there. Anyway, I'm going to remove these old batteries and then clean the contacts with, where's it gone? This fiberglass pen. Hopefully the remote control will then work. And while I do that, don't forget to subscribe to Car Spy TV. That makes it easier to find my other content. Can you also please do me a favor and click like on this video? And I'll see you next time. Look at that.